This past weekend, I nearly melted in the desert. So here's the thing, I was carrying six plus liters to get me roughly 115 miles on actually really well-maintained gravel roads. But unfortunately, Mother Nature had different plans, even according to the forecast. It reached 90 degrees, 15 mile an hour headwinds, and a whole lot of sun, I was consuming a lot more water than I anticipated. All of that culminated to me being extremely dehydrated and doing something I haven't done in seven years. So in this video, we're gonna talk about that. We're also gonna talk about where to carry water, how to carry water on your bike, as well as how the climate and the terrain should dictate how much water you carry, and yes, how to get out of that bad situation. Let's talk water. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm reading a series of unfortunate events in the most recent bike packing journal. Have you heard of the bike packing journal? It's pretty rad. It's a biannual print publication and you can get yours by signing up for the bike packing collective. So what's included in the bike packing collective? Well, two times a year, you get the bike packing journal. It automatically signs you up to win prizes and it helps support not only this video, but everything you see on bikepacking.com. I have a link down low so that you can check that out. But if you are interested in helping support these videos and everything you see on bikepacking.com and this rad print publication, consider joining today. So climate, where you ride has a big effect on your water needs and consumption. Elevation, exposure, wind, and heat all play a big factor. Desert riding is obviously much different than riding over 100 creeks a day or riding alongside a river. Before each trip, I find myself doing some due diligence and making sure I understand where I can get water, the big long stretches between two water sources, and all of that information helps me determine my daily mileage and just sets better expectations for the trip, which I did a poor job of this past weekend but you live and learn. So on the flip side of that, if you are riding in an area where there is readily available water, then you could probably set your expectations differently. Personally, I really enjoy just carrying this Be Free, and I actually did a full review on this product, and I'll link that below. It's a liter. If I want to carry a liter of water, I can do that. But if I cross a stream, I can easily just fill it up chug some water really quickly, and then maybe fill it up halfway, throw it in my frame bag. It works really well and it keeps the weight of the bike down. So just doing your route research will definitely help set your water consumption expectations, your daily mileage expectations, and in general, just make for a more enjoyable trip. Where I carry water on the bike specifically is very dependent on the terrain that I'm gonna be traveling over. When I'm riding on my drop bar mountain bike, I like to keep all of my weight off my back and on my bike. The bike holds that weight really well. There's plenty of storage spots on that bike and in general it's really simple to pack water. But when I'm riding more single track heavy routes I like to balance that weight between my bike and my body. This keeps the bike weight down which helps actually maneuver the bike a little bit easier and it'll definitely help when you need to jump off your bike and hike with your bike over tough obstacles. So talking about how and where to carry water. Bottles and cages. This is probably the simplest solution because you probably already have these two items. But oftentimes when you try to fit a bottle or two bottles within a frame, it can take away precious cargo space within that frame. So other locations to mount bottles, obviously you've got rigid forks and this is a really great use of space. Obviously a lot of these rigid forks now are coming with bosses where you can mount them on both sides of the fork. So when I'm riding with my rigid fork, I'm not getting all super gnarly or I'm not riding on really rough, challenging terrain. I know you rigid single speeders, this does not apply to you. So the extra weight up front is not as noticeable. That being said, there are ways to mount bottles to suspension forks. I know King Cage has some clamps that they weld together where you can mount a bottle. I tend to steer clear of that just because when I am riding my full suspension bike, I'm riding more single track and I just don't like that extra weight up front. If you're interested in learning about more ways of adding water bottles and cage mounts to your bike, we did a gear index on all of those options. And while I'm at it, we also have a really great gear index on useful, durable, and oversized bottle cages for bike packing. So both of those gear indexes are linked below. So a few other uses, this is a king cage top cap mount where you basically replace your top cap for 
This works really well, it's pretty unique, and you have really easy access to water. A lot of people like to use stem bags. You could use two stem bags on either side of your stem. And then another one, a lot of bikes come with bosses where you can install cages on your down tube. And while that's a great use of space, oftentimes those bottles get really dirty. So typically I like to carry the largest capacity bottle I can. This is 26 ounces or roughly 760 milliliters. So two of these together are 1.5 liters. So if I've got two of these on my fork, I've got a liter and a half and that's pretty good. So another option is flasks, soft flasks, collapsible water containers. These are fantastic. When you need the water storage, you have it. When you don't need the water storage, it packs down next to nothing and they're extremely lightweight. So these are great because while well, you can fit them anywhere you want, and they don't take up much space other than when they are filled. But when they are full, you will just wanna make sure that you actually have the capacity to fit them in your bikepacking bags. This is the Cadadin Be Free, like I mentioned before. This basically acts as a soft flask. And this is a Hydro Pack Stow, which is just a 500 milliliter container. Uh, so I carry sometimes two of these. But in general, this is a great extra capacity storage water container, especially if you anticipate a dry stretch on your bikepacking trip. The easiest way to carry large amounts of water is in a large capacity container like these hydration bladders. I've specifically been using two liter hydration bladders within my frame for a very long time and I love it. The area within your frame really holds the weight extremely well, especially a large container right on top of your down tube. And it's really easy to access when you wrap the hose kind of around your top tube like I do. So what I'm looking for in a bladder to fit within my frame is something that's relatively maneuverable, especially this MSR dromedary, although they don't make these anymore. You have to get like a dromedary and the hose itself. This is a three liter platypus hoser, which I would normally just fill up to two liters and this works really well. But in general, I'm looking for a bladder that kind of conforms to my frame that is maneuverable like this, something that doesn't necessarily have any rigid parts to it. So if you're looking to get weight off your bike and on your back for a variety of reasons, then backpacks or hip packs are great. I typically will do this for two reasons. The first being I want to take the weight off my bike because I'm riding more single track. I want to make it a little bit lighter. I want to make it more maneuverable. The second reason is because while I'm on single track, I'm probably riding a bike or a bike frame that maybe is a little bit smaller or a full suspension bike where that rear shock gets in the way. So I don't have a ton of capacity on the bike itself. So in those two instances, I will end up using a hip pack or a backpack. While this does create more weight of your body, which in turn probably creates more weight on your sit bones and on your seat, it will help facilitate extra storage when you are looking for it. So a few options that I've used in the past, this right here is the Osprey Raptor. This is a big backpack, but it can fit three liters of water. But when you fit three liters of water and a variety of things within the backpack, that really can add up and put stress on your back and your butt. So I now steer clear of anything like this. For something like this, the Decline Hot Laps 5 liter, this is a great hip pack that was recently redesigned by Decline. Uh, this fits two liters of water, but not only that, it fits two liters of water and it fits the camera that's shooting me right now and an extra lens. So it has a ton of capacity as well as some really small pockets on the side and on the inside. And it just really holds the weight really well with these straps here. You can kind of tug it down. It sits right on top of the hips and it's really not cumbersome at all. So another pack that I've been using recently is this Ultimate Direction Ultra Vest 5.0. And this is great. It fits two liters. It fits a little bit higher on the back. So if you do want to use jersey pockets, you can still access them with this pack. And it just in general holds the weight really well. So as well as the two liter capacity in the back, these 500 milliliter flasks fit in the front. So if you are looking for extra storage, you can fill these up. And if you're looking just for a bottle to put like some Tailwind Nutrition or just some mix in general, uh, these are really great for that. And then finally, you can just use accessory bags, cages, volet straps. You can kind of be creative in ways of carrying water, especially when you really need a lot of water, six, seven, eight liters of water when you are traveling through a desert. One of the bags that I've been using recently is the Nuke Sunrise Fuselage. 
And this bag fits directly underneath your down tube, really close to your crank arms and your bottom bracket. And it works extremely well because it's got this little sticky membrane on the back here. So it sticks to the frame, it doesn't move. It fits a one liter Nalgene or a 1.5 liter water bottle that you could probably find at a gas station, super convenient. And it's pretty lightweight and obviously completely enclosed. So uh, none of the dust, grit and grime gets on the bottle itself. So I would say there is no right or wrong way of packing water, so long as you have enough to get you by. So next up, so in this segment, 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 Johnny, we talk about how to not get screwed over. So I've been in some pretty scary situations over the past handful of years. And I think the best way to avoid being in a bad position, especially with water, is do your research, carry enough water based on that research, have a backup plan and consider caching water, especially on routes where there is no water available. But if you do end up finding yourself in a bad situation, there are a handful of things that you can think about while you're out on route that might get you out of a pinch. Going back now seven years, I was in Nevada and I was completely out of water. I was actually with someone, Kurt Sandiforth, and well, we desperately needed water. We were searching for water and well, we came across a cattle tank. And you guessed it, we ended up filtering out water through this cattle tank. And we survived. The water didn't taste great, but we didn't get sick either. So fast forward seven years and well, I ended up doing that again. So what I ended up doing was taking my shirt off, taking my cap of my bottle off, and basically wrapping the shirt around the top of the bottle so that none of the, well, floaty bits get in the bottle. The water did take a while to kind of seep through the shirt, which is a good thing because it's filtering. And then I put in one of these Aquamira tabs and one tab typically treats one liter of water. These tablets kill those cysts that I'm worried about, the Giardia and Cryptosporidium. They also kill viruses and bacteria. So these are the best, but you do have to wait for hours. In general, it could have been worse. Luckily, the cattle tank water was actually pretty fresh. Uh, and luckily it was there. I'm very thankful for that. So other things to think about, especially in desert climates, you know, if you see some lush green areas, especially in the spring, there could be running water there. Another option is just asking people. Humans are generally good people, especially if you're in a vehicle, you're willing to help somebody that is struggling on a bike that needs water. So ask people, it can't hurt. So now it's time to hear from you. How do you carry your water on your bike? And if you wanna share your crazy dehydration story, leave it in the comment section below. As always, thank you all so much for tuning in. Until next time, pedal further.